Hi, I'm Ann Coppola. I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Endocrinology, Diabetes, and Metabolism at the University of Pennsylvania, where I also direct the Clinical and Translational Research Center. The 2015 Statistical Application Award from the Journal of the American Statistical Association uh, was for a paper that was first authored by a former graduate student here at Penn, and I collaborated with him and his mentor, Wenxin Guo in Biostatistics, and another collaborator, collaborator from Kentucky to see if we could find the right way to model some very complex hormonal data. One of the things that happens with a lot of the hormones is that there's a feedback loop. One hormone can then um, stimulate the action or the production of another hormone, and then it feeds back to keep it from being too much. So it almost acts like a thermostat to keep the hormone levels just right. How to model that thermostat kind of interaction can be very tricky because things aren't happening at the same time. There's something called a lag in between the two. So how to come up with a model that models both hormones at the same time and appropriately model their relationship and then beyond that see if it looks like a normal pattern or a pattern that shows that there's not quite as much uh, appropriate regulation. That was the trick of this analysis and this, that's why that application won the award. It's particularly relevant for older people because Sometimes what you see over time is not that the levels themselves of the hormones change, but the way that the body adapts to any changes in that pattern can change. And this type of model can pick up on those types of things. Beyond looking at the absolute levels, it can look at their relationships to each other. I've been studying hormones in older people ever since the beginning of my career. I have two particular areas that I focus on. One is what is normal thyroid function in an older person? And the second is are there hormonal therapies that could prevent or treat frail older people? One of the things that's most interesting in the thyroid research that we're doing is that we're finding that we may not need to treat as many older people who have these mild thyroid testing abnormalities. What's considered normal is based on what's normal for a younger person but as it turns out, there are some changes that happen with age that may be adaptive and may be good when you're older. And so we need some new reference ranges that are appropriate for older people to prevent too many older people from being treated with thyroid disease. The other area, the frailty area, there's really not a lot to offer the frail older person at this point. And one of the things that we found, which shouldn't be a total surprise, but it had a dramatic effect, was that exercise, resistance training, really can help a person who is already frail be able to get around. We're still trying to find the right magic hormone to help them beyond that to see if we can get a bigger boost beyond exercise or try to help people who maybe aren't able to be in a position to exercise.